everybody, it's Steve and Chelsea Scott with Come Follow Me. Hi guys. Welcome to today's lesson. You're a pirate today. Okay, Arr. Okay. we are so grateful that you're here and thank you for learning with us if you're brand new. Welcome. We are a little bit late this week, we're sorry, but we're here now and we want to do some shout outs to Lenny Warnick and Chaka Harris. Thank you guys so much for always messaging us every week. We love you. We appreciate your support. Can I ask you guys a favor? Wait, we got to give him a fist bump. Oh, yeah, Here's your fist bump. And your hot five. Ba Bam. And heart. Sending okay. you so much love. Now Chelsea has a favor to ask of you. <laughs> okay. If you can pause this video and press thumbs up. Just take a second and do that. Appreciate it so much. Thank you. It helps the videos. It helps others to see the videos. And we get to spread some love. All right. Guys, today's lesson is called Faithful, Just, and True. We are doing Doctrine and Covenants section 51 through 57, May the 17th through the 23rd. We're going to step aside. We're going to give you a screenshot. There's your screenshot. But remember, as always, you can go to thestevescott.com. Go to the download section, and there's free whiteboard screenshots and a handout that I work on every, every week. It's free 99, 100% off. You get it. All right. And I got my awesome journal today. Okay, so grab your journals, your scriptures, and your scripture markers. It's time for us to connect up. Yes. So this week's lesson is kind of a it's kind of a connection lesson where there's so much going on, it seems like in these sections, that you have to pull and piece together things um, to be able to find the themes. But it is really, really good. And sometimes there are just so many things that you gotta get really clear. Yeah. on what the message really is. I try not to get bogged down with too much information, and that's what I do. I'll just like study and study, and then I'm like, okay, there's just so much. How do we boil this down? So we really want to focus on these two principles, like these two things right here. You want to explain that a little Yeah, bit? so we're going to talk about being faithful, just, and wise stewards. And we're going to talk specifically about individuals, about the church, and our whole compelling reason to move forward in the cause of Zion. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're going to boil it all down into those simple parts. The ultimate goal. All right, right guys. Now, you guys, we have some amazing tools. I have the caveman version of the Come Follow Me. Okay, you can find it in your digital scriptures, your space scriptures, or your caveman scriptures. These are so valuable. I hope you're using them and I hope you're reading them because in the very beginning, of this, there is an amazing introduction, okay? When it talks about everything that's going on. It says, for the church members in eight, the 1830s, gathering the gathering saints and building the city of Zion were spiritual as well as temporal works with many practical matters to address. Some needed to purchase and distribute land where the saints could settle. Someone needed to print books and other publications and someone needed to run a store to provide goods to those in Zion. So we have all of these different little assignments and, and responsibilities being handed out. But guys, it is much as a spiritual matter as it was a physical matter. The Lord asks of the early saints, and he does the same for us today. So we are going to be looking at these, and I'm going to be using some of the manual just to help us through today. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do you want to start? We'll start here. Zion. Yes. Well, let's start. Let's start oh, in our yeah, yeah. Doctrine and Covenants section 19. 51, verse 19. Can you all turn there? Doctrine and Covenants 51, 19. Pause while everyone get gets there. It. You can pause the video as we get there. Okay. Doctrine and Covenants 51, 19. I'll read it. And whoso is found a faithful, a just, and a wise steward shall enter into the joy of the Lord and shall inherit eternal life. Okay, so what does it mean to be a faithful, just, and wise steward? So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Well, in your journals, you could even write it faithful, just, just. and wise. Mm -hmm. okay, there's three parts of being a steward. So here we go. Let us go into the purpose, where we are going. In Moses chapter 7, verse 18, it says that the Lord called his people Zion. Now, this wasn't a city. It wasn't brick and mortar that he called Zion. It wasn't... It wasn't the towers and the, the buildings. It was the people. And the Lord called his people Zion, Zion because they were of one heart, one mind, dwelt in righteousness, and there was no poor among them. Doesn't that sound amazing to be in that place? 
Do you want to do the Moses chapter? Well, that's what I just did. did I just it? quoted it out of my brain. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do 51.9. Okay. And let every man deal honestly and be alike among this people and receive alike, not being the same, but alike, that ye may be one, even as I have commanded you. And I think this, the word one, is, it's such a powerful word. It's unifying. It's connection. It's supporting each other it's doing things together there's strength in unity so this is a big word so can you have can you look different can you act different can you have different strengths and abilities can you have all of those different things and still be faithful just and wise in the in the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints and play a really important role in moving this work forward, yes. So that's true, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you look like, where, you're, where from. you're from, where you're living. I can be fit. But here's what gathers us all together. In Zion, if we are all faithful, if we are all just, and if we are all true. Okay? And it says you that wise? you may... Wise. Why did I say true? I don't know. That works too, though. Yeah. Um, let every man deal honestly... We could all be honest. Now, in the cause of Zion, do you think that, would you circle the word honesty? That right there is a foundational principle of Zion. That we are honest with our in everything we do with our fellow men. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I was thinking about um, the scripture in Luke 12, 48. So I was just thinking about how, you guys think about this with us too, is what would you do without the gospel in your life? You're thinking about the early saints, you know, and they're finally finding this, the truth, the fullness of the gospel and what a huge blessing that was and how every, like for myself, every day, I think I am so grateful for the gospel in my life. And you're probably feeling the same way as well. Like raise your hand, thumbs up on that one. Okay. So there is, um, in Luke 12, 48, it's talking about how much is, much that is given, much is required. And what is required of us individually, specifically, and what is required of the, the church to help us to get to this ultimate goal there. Got it. So individually. Well, let's go to the church first because we'll end with individually. Yeah. Okay. In the church, let's go to section 54, verse 2. And I think lots of times this is where people go to first. We're like, okay, we're going to have a stewardship in, in callings and in positions in the church. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter where you serve. It doesn't matter whether you're serving in like the, the nursery. I'd like to be a greeter in the ward. Mm -hmm. um, I would like these things. There's a funny story. Can I tell you a funny story? Of He was my football coach and he was the bishop. And when he was getting released, he knew he was going to be released that day. He stood up and he, would say, he said, we would like to call Brother Walker to be the nursery leader in our ward. All those in favor, they all raise their hands. And he, he just sustained himself as the nursery leader. Okay. <laughs> the stake president got up and he said, Bam, and he looked over at him. He said, we would like to release Bishop Walker as the bishop and the nursery leader. And he was like, dang it. He was so close to getting his dream <laughs> calling. All right. But I think a lot of people who are in branches too, you know what I mean? Like they're in some smaller parts of the not part of the church, but like smaller areas, branches, geographic are, areas. areas, right? Callings are just, everyone's doing their part. You you're know? like the greeter. You're like cleaning up. You're the yeah, one you're doing, doing the nursery. Doing and then you go, the we, we get it. Yes. Now, Doctrine and Covenants section 54, verse two. Okay. Verily, behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, my servant Newell Knight, you shall stand fast in the office whereunto I have appointed you. Now, there was lots going on with Lehman Copley in this section. And we're going to talk about him in a little bit. Um, but Newell K. Whitney was told, stay, stay put in what I've called you to do. And have you ever got a calling that you didn't feel secure enough? Like you were like, oh, I don't know if I could do that one. Or you were like inadequate or any of those feelings? Have you raise ever had your, Raise your hand. Chelsea yeah. will raise four hands. Sometimes, right? What was the one calling that you got that you were like, oh, 
gospel doctrine te teacher. That's what we're doing right now, but on YouTube to lots of people across the world, which is kind of a strange thing now, but my heart has grown and I feel more relaxed and calm. But at the beginning, I was extreme, extremely, Ex extremely, extremely, that's actually true, terrified. And I was ready to run out the door. But as we grow and as we practice, we feel, um, it's like the muscle, you know, you're strengthening the muscle. I feel a lot more content with that, but yeah. So there's a talk and let's just relate this. No matter where you serve, the Lord asks us to be faithful, just and wise stewards. And there's a talk by Elder Uchtdorf in 2008 where he talked about lifting where you stand. Can you go listen to that? It is an amazing talk. It is so good this week to be able to do that. But I remember when Chelsea was called as the gospel doctrine teacher, they called me as the assistant gospel doctrine teacher. The best calling I've ever had. Like, hands down. I'm the assistant gospel doctrine teacher. It means I get to have all the fun and no responsibility. Perfect for me. And Chelsea, they specifically turned to me and were like, Steve, um, let Chelsea grow in this calling and help so, her. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there was moments where Chelsea would be like, tell him, tell him what happened. Tell yeah. him what would happen. It was so fun. It was when I was brand new too. So I would have like these feelings of being like, I'm just going to run out the door. But Steve would just, you know, help me and help me to feel more calm in a way. But then he would do things like, it was my time to speak, so he would just sit down, so I couldn't be like... Well. She'd look at me and be like... And I'd be like... I, I know a lot and of I'd people sit relate to me. I know. You tell me. You guys tell me. Like, I'm not alone in this, so I don't feel... I feel like the important lesson for me is doing those hard things, right? Saying yes to the hard things. Okay, I'll grow. Even though this might be really uncomfortable, I will do this for the Lord. So can you be faithful, just, and wise and be absolutely terrified out of your shoes? <laughs> yes. And I think there's like some honorable qualities in that, you know? So if you are, if you have a calling that you are struggling with and it's hard for you, I feel your pain, but also like I want to congratulate you for saying yes and for doing this because this is part of being a steward. This is part of being... Um, is our sacred, like it's a, it's a sacred calling that we have to help this work move forward. And we're just all doing our part in our own way, but it is a stewardship. We have been called So having the blessings of the gospel, much is given, much is required, all of that. So it's kind of like you're giving back because we're so grateful for what we have. Now let's move to the individual part. You know, with being faithful, just, and a wise steward, there is accountability. Yes. There's accountability. There's accountability with church callings and, and when we're called to minister and whatever that is. We're, we understand that. But did you know like the same thing applies in our own individual life is that we have accountability to our stewardship. There's an amazing quote in here by Quentin L. Cook. And do you guys love the reference of this talk of um, stewardship of sacred trust? Here's what, he, here's what Elder Cook says. He said, we live in perilous times. When many believe we are not accountable to God and that we do not have personal responsibility or stewardship for ourselves or others, many in the world are focused on self-gratification and do not believe that they are their brother's keeper. In the church, however, we believe that these stewardships are a sacred trust. And in that same talk, Elder Cook says that we are to be accountable and stewards over our time and our talents. Mm -hmm. Everything that we have. Like, it is an amazing talk. So you, you got two things for homework this week, okay? You got lift where you stand and then a sacred trust, stewardship of sacred trust. I'll leave the links in the description down well, below. Well, I want to talk to parents a little bit more too um, because it's important to understand this. And I was like, wow, this is just a great way of saying it from Elder, Elder Cook's talk. But he's like, Remember that having re religious observance in the home is as important as providing food, clothing, and shelter. Parents can also help children discover and develop their talents. We are responsible for our talents we have received. And children who are not taught that they are accountable for their time and talents are increasingly subject to the foolishness and unrighteousness of this world. The family proclamation warns that individuals who fail to fulfill family responsibilities will one day stand accountable before God. So even just teaching our own children that we are, um, our time and our talents 
are our stewardship and we need to be developing them and using them to further this work. So for all you teenagers out there, what does that mean? That means that you can do hard things and develop those talents. See, you'll notice we use the word develop. Development means that there's a step-by-step -step process that comes. We do step-by-step -step, and we're not perfect at it in the beginning, mm -hmm. but we can do it. So you have a beautiful voice, okay? It takes time to be able to develop and learn. I remember my mom, my mom put me in musical theater and the choir. Okay? And, and I always thought singing is so dumb. And, but my mom's like, you have a, my mom was very musical and played the piano. I'm so grateful for her and for what she had me do. That way I can sing and I can follow notes and I can sing in a choir. And, and I'm in no way fit to be in the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, but I can, I can sing a hymn and it feels so, developing your talents, whatever they may be. So individually, the Lord calls people in these sections, section 52, let's go there. Section 52, we get these examples where the Lord calls people to do specific things. All right, so in section 52, verse 5 and 6, the, well, in all these verses here in 50, section 52, he asks one thing of them, that they increase in faith and show faithfulness, okay? So look in verse 5 and 6, uh, we, verse 4, we got to do verse 4. Okay, do you want to read that? Verse 4, 5, and 6, and verse 52. And inasmuch as they are faithful unto me, it shall be made known unto them what they shall do. Okay, so inasmuch as they are faithful. And it shall also, inasmuch as they are faithful, be made known unto them the land of your inheritance. And inasmuch as they are not faithful, they shall be cut off even as I will as seemeth me good. So there is a promise here. There is a promise to being faithful that you will know what to do. If you are trying to figure out something, you will know what to do if you are doing the things to connect and have the Spirit with you. It says in verse 13, And behold, he that is faithful shall be made ruler over many things. And look in verse 20, And the days have come according to men's faith, it shall be done unto them. Go all the way to verse 34. It says, He that is faithful the same shall be kept and blessed with much fruit. Mm -hmm. Guys, faith and works go together. Mm -hmm. okay, they go together. You can, you can seize a person's faith by their works. Isn't that amazing? So in a faithful, just, and wise stewards, then our faithfulness in our trust in walking forward in what the Lord has asked us to do will be shown by our works. And the Lord has asked all of us individually that we would do it. So if every member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was to walk forward in faith in their individual stewardship, it would rise, the church would rise as a whole. It's amazing. It's like the high tide rises all ships. And that's an amazing part. Okay, so this is 6 and 10. Section 54. Yeah. Verse 6 and 10. But blessed are they who have kept the covenant and observed the commandments, for they shall obtain mercy. And again, be patient in tribulation. Okay, be patient in your tribu tribulation. Until I come, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. And they who have sought me early shall find rest to their souls. And this brings a lot of hope, right? That we will not be left alone through our tribulations. If we continue to look to the Savior look to our Heavenly Father for them to succor us, we will have the added strength from the atonement to help us work through hard things. So I know a lot of you out there have had some really hard things happen to you. And please, can you share in the comments how you made it through those things? Please share your testimony. There are people on here that need to hear it, okay? So please do that in the comments. In section 54, verse 6 and 10, the Lord gives section 54 because Lehman Copley, who was asked by the Lord to... Um, donate land for the building of, for the saints. Um, he had consecrated it, and then once the saints started arriving, he kicked everybody off, and he broke his covenant. So, can you be faithful, just, and wise when someone else is being faithless, unjust, and insincere and unkind? Can you do that? Because mm -hmm. the Lord's saying, "Hey, be faithful, be patient in your tribulations; they will come." And I believe the answer is yes. So this week has been a bit of a roundhouse for Chelsea and I. It has been like one of those weeks where it feels like 
here comes one and then here comes another boom and just feels um my word of the week would be kerfuffled that's what i told <laughs> chelsea i'm like i feel kerfuffled she's like you never use that word and it's a weird word i know but it just feels like but it can't... was it was more like when we were trying to record our video we kept on having people that were needing our help right it was important Visit, and there's like more than just one there's like a few people and we're like wow so we thought okay well it's, so here's it's what, helping here, the individual the one here's what we did with our books this week and then we visited with certain people that needed needed us so when i say kerfuffled it meant like the lord was going over here okay <laughs> now go over here and then look over here and i was like okay but heavenly father i want to do i need to do a video and he's like pause wait be patient be still and so that's what we're doing, and we're trusting the process. Isn't it funny that this week's lesson was being on faithful, ju faithful, just, and wise, and then I had so many opportunities to learn to be faithful, just, and wise. Did you? Mm -hmm. So many. Yeah, because wise, I, I was doing some research on like what these deeper meanings of the word, but was wisdom, right? And what does wisdom mean? Is asking that question, what else can I do, right? What else can I do for you? For the Lord, what can I do? What else? Not the usual things that I already know how to do and I just do the things. It's what else? So read verse 40, section 52, verse 40. This was the one Chelsea said, we need to focus on this one this week. It is so important and we've had many opportunities. And remember in all things, the poor and the needy, the sick, the afflicted. For he that doeth not these things, the same is not my disciple. For our um, occupation, we help a lot of people with their health. And I feel like it's such a wonderful and um, sacred experience helping people find answers for their health and um, helping the poor, helping the needy, the sick. When we started um, working for this company, it, it was the humanitarian efforts that really touched our hearts, right? We were really moved by the humanitarian efforts. And so we have like this humanitarian, like, humanitarian call. heart. Yeah, to, to help other people out of suffering in all ways. And so we've been able to do that with like spiritually and mentally and physically and now financially. And now I, we're in the process of working with a reserve that's right next, a native reserve that's right next door to us and being able to help relieve some of the suffering there. It's just expanding and it just feels so good. And it's such a wonderful thing to do. So whenever we have an opportunity to give, or to help, we really try to do that. I want to encourage you guys to do that too. What else can I do? Faithful, question. just, and wise stewards spend a lot of time on their knees. They spend a lot of time on their knees and they spend a lot of time connecting up. Faithful, just, and wise stewards spend a lot of time looking for someone to serve who hurts less than they do. Um, that's what faithful, just, and wise individuals do. Mm -hmm. um, they use their talents. Faithful, just, and wise stewards are asked to do things that they don't necessarily feel comfortable doing, but they do it anyway. I've, right. been, I've been praying to know what else can I do. And it was so crazy because I got, um, before I even started studying this lesson, and then I got a message on Facebook that was from um, a the, other, the other side of the world with this lady was reaching out to me. And she runs this orphanage and she was like asking for help. And I was like, this is just the craziest thing. I, I told her, I said, I believe that God has um, guided you to me because I've actually been praying to know how I can help with this, what, whatever God needs me to do, whatever Heavenly Father needs me to do. And it was such a cool, just the timing, you know how the timing works sometimes? We're like, wow. So can we read one, one last scripture, section 56, verse... Um, 18 okay and this is this is the part of Zion okay blessed are the poor who are pure in heart whose hearts are broken and whose spirits are contrite for they shall see the kingdom of God coming in power and great glory unto their deliverance for the fatness of the earth shall be theirs brothers and sisters where is your heart um, do you need to have spiritual open heart surgery is your heart broken, contrite, and willing to be wise, faithful, and just? To be taught what that looks like? 
um, this right here, if you look at here, it's like stewardship is consecration. Stewardship is spirituality. Stewardship is accountable for your time and your talents. But it all is directed from this part right here. Okay? Right here in our heart. And remember, the Lord called his people Zion because they were of one heart. First. One heart first. Okay? And that's, our cha that's my challenge to you this week. Is to look for someone to serve in a faithful, just, and wise way. Bob? I forgot what I was going to say. I was, I, was on a, I was having a moment. Maybe it'll come back to you. Maybe. Um, I just want to, I want you to know that we love you and that we pray for you. And we realize that there are a lot of you that are having a hard time. Um, we have this powerful blessing of the gospel in our lives. And the purpose of this is to direct us to Christ and help us to direct other people to Christ. And directing yourself to Christ is you have to open your heart and be able to feel Christ's love for you. So I want to challenge you again. Ask for that. Ask so you can feel that love and know that you are important. Um, that you are divine. That you are a child of God and you have a divine calling, mission, and stewardship on this earth. It is something you have consecrated you have promised before you came here. I believe that we have. And let's let's get to work. Let's do the things that we're supposed to be doing. So when I'm given stewardship of something, it's actually not mine. When the Lord gives me stewardship, it's to represent him with his stuff. Um, just imagine the Lord giving you something of his and saying, Will you please watch over this and take care of it? Make it better and do everything you can to make this good and protect it. And I would be, whatever you need, whatever you need, I will do. Our faithful, just, and wide stewardship is His. And we magnify Him and we mirror Him. And that's what these sections are about when the Lord gives people something to do that they needed to do, spiritually and physically. So we encourage you to do that part. If you anything's prompted you this week, write it in your journal. I test it. This is Christ Church. And um, he, he is in charge. And so as uncomfortable as anything might be, I will do what he asks. And that's our challenge for you this week. Now, at the end of every week, we give a word of the week. And the word of the week this week is stewardship. Okay, stewardship. Put it in the comment section down below. Please subscribe to this video. Hit the notification so that you get every time we post a video, it, you will come up and you'll be able to see that. Um, we love every one of you all around the world, from Egypt you all the way to are Iceland. so awesome. I love hearing from where you're from. I love hearing what you have to tell us. I love it. So keep, keep doing it. So from your friendly Canadians, eh? <laughs> have a great week. Bye, you guys. Love you, bye.